We've never actually had a CTO speak before, uh, so I guess the first question is pretty easy. But uh, what do you do uh, as a CTO, and uh, what is the best, what is the part that you like best and least about being a CTO? Uh, CTO is kind of a BS title. Like it, it, it can kind of mean anything. Basically, uh, what it probably means is that you were there at the beginning of a company. Uh, you had a friend, and she was the one who was willing to. To like talk to people who would invest money and she was willing to like help design the product and get off the space and you were the one who was responsible for building the, the, the infrastructure building the product and getting it shipped um, then once you went from like two people to three people to four people to five people like like being there at the beginning you get to make up really fancy titles you get to be the super high admiral of whatever you want and like CTO is the title that just sort of sticks around so if, you, if you're if you meet someone who's from a company that's got 300 employees and they're the CTO, it generally means that they were the most technical person when the company got started, and that's that's kind of where I'm at. Um, generally, at that stage, what you're doing completely depends. Like it's 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 not like head of finance where you are responsible for doing the books and getting the numbers and everything else. It's it's super general. Uh, so at Evernote, uh, currently I've got engineering working for me. I've got the people who run our servers. I've got the security team. I've got the IT team. Uh, that they run all of our computers, uh, but in, in different companies it's going to vary. Um, I generally enjoy most doing the actual technical stuff, and I think that's what you'll find is that the people who come out of a technical background, like they like to actually touch the stuff. Um, the parts that get to be tough for someone like me at a larger company is the stuff like running a company. Like, how do you? What is the right frequency for which you do uh, performance reviews, and how should you do? Uh, you know, how should you lay out the, the, the seating plan of the office? Stuff like that can be a little bit tiring because it's, a, it's, it's you don't get to play with the technology as much. On your LinkedIn profile, you call yourself uh, an order muppet, which I think is an interesting term. Uh, what skills and personal qualities do you think are important to be successful in the, in the tech industry? Yeah, I, I generally feel like in a, in a successful company, you're going to have to have a mix of people. You're going to have to have some people, like I said, who are, who are willing to go hang out with investors and get money, and some people who are going to keep the trains running. Um, uh, in our companies, I've tried to be the person who keeps the trains running on time. Uh, I'm, I see my job as making our company not fail, and then the people who design the awesome products, like their job is to make us successful. Um, you can be, you can have a very significant role within technology on either end of the spectrum, but you should be self-aware enough to know which side you're on. Like, if, if you really like sitting around and getting that last like 1% of performance out of a database, and you're willing to plow away on it for a, a week to get there, like you're probably on the order Muppet side of the spectrum. Whereas if like you don't really want to sweat the details, you really want to like talk about stuff and wave your hands a lot, you're more a little more on the chaos Muppet, and you have to find a, an order Muppet to, to make you successful. I love working in technology, I like building things, and I keep going to companies, don't have anyone working for me on day one, build it up, do a lot of things, hire a bunch of people, and then uh, do something else. Um, generally, at the early stage of a company, your job is to build things, and then a little later on, you've got 100 employees at the company, and you suddenly have to decide uh, that the company needs someone who doesn't just build things, but builds the company to build things. You, you, you have to be willing to manage people. Uh, I haven't typed a line of code in probably a month because nobody likes me anymore. And, and that's a tough transition, and not everybody wants to make it. And so, so at, at the at the medium later stages of your career, you kind of have to decide: do I do I want to keep typing into code? Do I want to keep building 3D models, or do I want to help mentor other people, recruit people, build a structure that can do that for me? Um, not everybody wants to go into the management route. Uh, I know some really smart people. There's this great senior engineer at our company that used to have my type of job somewhere else. And he didn't like it. He, he wanted to just sit down and program, and uh, that's that's uh, that's that's something that you you have to discover within yourself once you've been working in the field for a while is whether you want to go down on the dark side and, and manage a bunch of people, or whether you actually want to keep doing things hands on.